Time to dive back into the prospect brief where we look at Luca Cagnoni and Cameron Lund's games. Plus, get caught up on some of the latest Sharks news, including Joe Thornton's jersey getting retired, new black jerseys, and uh, injury news relating to the Sharks' first practice back home in what feels like forever. So all that and more on today's episode. Your Locked On Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, welcome to Locked on Sharks, the premier hockey podcast covering your favorite team in the Bay Area. My name is J.D. Young, contributor at San Jose Hockey Now. And I want to thank you for making Locked on Sharks your first listen, probably part of the Locked on Network. We cover your team every day. And if you want to be an everyday, all you have to do is just follow along wherever you get podcasts or you can watch this on YouTube as well. And today we're going to be diving back into the prospect grief. Uh, we're going to look at two recent game or recent games from two Sharks prospects, including uh, Luca Cagnoni, the defenseman from the 2023 draft, uh, picking the fourth round, and then Cameron Lund, the forward, picked in the second round in, in the 2022 draft. And look at kind of where as we continue to track their development, see how these what these guys are doing, what they're continuing to work on, and what they need to continue to work on, um, and then. At the end, we're going to get caught up on some of the uh, a smattering of, of Sharks news and notes, including Joe Thornton finally getting his jersey retired, um, potential new black jerseys, news and notes around injuries, including uh, Globe and Couture coming back, um, all that fun stuff. So before we get into all that, do want to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to get started. All right. Let's start with Luca Cagnoni, who I watched his game from um, the 17th when the Portland Winterhawks played the Kiwana, um, and they won 5-4. Cagnoni, one goal, three assists, three shots on goal. Man, is he so much fun to watch. Um, again, what what really impresses me about Cagnoni is remember, he's five foot nine, five foot ten, depending on where you look, but not the biggest guy in the world. Um, uh, but how physical, physical he is, especially for a guy his size, and going up against much bigger forwards and and not afraid doesn't show any fear uh with it um i put out a clip on twitter of a six foot three forward going down going down the boards um and cagnoni just wipes him out um giving up you know multiple inches pounds etc etc um I talked about last time when I, when I did a deep dive of his ability to just kind of get under and use use his size to his advantage, uh, kind of get under some of these taller guys and kind of outwork them. And you continue to see that from him, um, you know, and yes, there's going to be times that he's going, you know, you, you saw a couple of times where he gets knocked off the puck, especially on board battles and stuff. And just because of getting being uh, five foot nine, um, you know, but for every time that happens, it's like, there's 10 other times where he's just out working out muscling guys who are bigger than him. So um, yes, the size is always going to be a thing with, with Cagnoni, um, but he's so smart and the way he uses his size to his advantage. And again, he puts everything into like when he hits somebody um, it it's he's, he's, he knows exactly where to and when to uh, do it. Again, it's not like he just woke up one day and he's five foot nine. He's been having to play against bigger players his entire life, right? He he knows kind of all the the tricks and trades and what to do um, to, to to utilize his size as best he can. Um, if if Cagnoni was six foot two, he would have been like a top fifteen pick. Like he, just the skill set, you know. I've been talking about his defense. I haven't even talked about his offense because uh, again, that's always the worry with him, right? With, with Cagnoni is. 
can we we know about the offensive skills and we'll talk about the offense here in just a second um but can he hold his own in his defensive zone and i've again i know his juniors etc cetera, etc cetera, and he's going to have you know that, that jump from going from juniors to professional having to play you know every guy who's much bigger than him and, and veteran etc cetera, etc cetera, and he's going to have that learning curve but i don't know man i I just got this feeling with every time I watch him, he's one of my favorite guys to watch just because he's so much fun to watch in both ends of the uh, ice. So speaking about offensive zone uh, again, um, a goal and three assists. Um, and some of his offense was created because of good defense, but um, I, I think the offense just, continues to just be he's a transition monster anytime he gets the puck in his own zone it's going to get successfully into the offensive zone and he's going to put his team in a better position um and i know portland is stacked they've got a bunch of guys right um and they just this is uh this was danielson the red wings pick uh this was his first game where he scored a, a goal in this game thanks to luca cagnoni and i want to start there with that one it was um on he he's holding he gets the puck at the, with some pressure on him at the point he's able to kind of deke around kind of s make a guy kind of shake off a guy he circles back and it kind of gives him some space because the defender doesn't know what to do the defender's kind of stuck right gives him some space and then he just puts this pass that is just like through a sea of sticks onto nate danielson and nate danielson does a, a great job of, of kind of finishing the play but it's based off Cagnoni's ability to create space not only for himself but for his teammates right because of what he's doing at the point none of the other defenders in the zone they're able to kind of react they're kind of waiting for him to do something and he's his ability to create space leads to Nate Danielson kind of being open um and then Danielson who's a you know a, a, he was a first round pick this year Aaron last year's draft um was able to, to fire at home um great job again at the blue line just his ability to stop the play before it even happens again against bigger players um just being physical and strong at the blue line several times you saw in this game where guys you know were trying to come through a transit uh, start the transition he just shuts it down um whether a poke check uh poke check or through uh, uh an actual body check just shuts down the play again Five foot nine, five foot ten. Um, one of his goals, so uh, or one of his assists. Great job! It was a four and four, and he's kind of the uh, he's kind of four and four situation, um, and it's a, basically a two on two kind of uh, rush play um, from Kawano. He breaks up the pass, so he's kind of his partner is kind of on the outside, and he's kind of on the inside between the two um, forwards. Um, the forward, you know, it, it shoot passes from the right to the left, and he's not only does he break up the play, but he has the wherewithal to kind of poke check it towards the kind of back checking forward who kind of circles back, and then that's what creates an offensive opportunity and eventually a, a goal. So he gets a secondary assist on that because of his ability to read the play, create the, the nose win to poke check and then uses kind of poke checks it enough to create a, an offensive rush the other way, which leads to a goal. Um, his goal in the power play uh, was basically him just doing a lot of the work, creating, creating, they get the pass, you know, he's kind of working along the middle of the blue line. They get the a couple passes on the um, left side of the power play, and he kind of sneaks down into the dot, and it's a beautiful, um, beautiful pass from uh, from the forward over there to Cagnoni for the one-timer, and he just bombs it, absolutely bombs it. Um, so, yeah, man, whenever you get a chance to watch Luca Cagnoni, uh, I highly recommend it. He's so much fun to watch. Um, and he's just continually racking up points. I think I saw a tweet tonight where um, he's already 10th, uh, 11th or 10th in, in Portland Winterhawks uh, history uh, when it comes to, to point scoring. And he's going to be there at least for this season and most likely for next season as well. Um, he's gonna, just going to keep climbing up these rankings. And, and yeah, 
he's really good. Um, I'm super impressed every time I watch him. Just his instinct, how calm he is with the puck. And then again, is the physicality for a guy his size. Um, kind of knows when to kind of pick his spots and such. And the Sharks got one here, man. Uh, <laughs> the Sharks got one. That's I keep. I'm I'm so impressed because it's both sides. It's his ability to to play tough defense play physical defense, especially for a guy, his side, and even not even for guys to his ability just to play tough physical defense. And then in the offensive zone, he's a freaking wizard. So, um, yeah, I, I, I cannot wait to watch him in the playoffs, uh, the WHL playoffs and, uh, see how far Portland can go. So, um, we'll continue. Uh, we'll dive into Cam Lund, um, and how his defensive game just continues to get stronger and stronger. And especially on the, a Northeastern team that is uh, struggling this season. So uh, we'll talk about him here and then we'll get to some of the Sharks news and notes at the end. Uh, so let's get to that in just one second. If you are looking for the perfect candidate, why search when you can be matched with them? That's where Indeed comes up if you need to hire you need indeed indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors according to indeed data and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast ditch the busy work you indeed for scheduling searching and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster and indeed doesn't help you hire fast doesn't just help you hire faster 93 percent of employers agree indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites according to recent indeed survey um, so join more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use indeed to hire great talent fast listeners of this show can get 75 dollar uh, sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at indeed.com slash locked on just go to indeed.com slash locked on right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Uh, indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire. You need Indeed. And I know the NFL regular season is over now, but the playoffs are here and there's still plenty of time to get on the action with uh, America's number one sports book, FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. You place a $5 bet. That's 150 bucks in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is super easy to use, and there are many different ways to bet. You can do same-game parlays. Uh, so maybe if you think the Niners are going to win this weekend uh, and you think Christian McCaffrey is going to score a touchdown because Christian McCaffrey scores a lot of touchdowns, um, that seems like a great way to go. You can find bets in the new Explore tab. Make a parlay in the Parlay Hub, the best way to find popular parlays and more so visit fanduel.com slash locked on to make your first bet a layup fanduel official partner of the nfl all right uh let's talk about our boy cam lund so i watched um this game from january 3rd when northeastern played on uh, the number two ranked boston university i also maybe wanted to watch a little bit of macklin celebrini uh, but anyway, so I know also Michael Fisher is in this game. So when I do these, I, I kind of I just watch the one guy, right? I watch Camlin and I basically scrub until he's back on the ice again. Like I, that's that's my process. So I didn't really pay watch Michael Fisher that much, and I kept getting my eyes drawn to Celebrini uh, because Macklin Celebrini is gonna be really good. So Camlin in this game. Um, zero goals, one assist, two shots on goal, and two penalty minutes. Um, and you the, remember, Northeastern is, is struggling this year, uh, kind of going through a bit of a rebuild this uh, year, this season, as they're and they were playing in such a tough, tough division, right? You got to play Boston College, you got to play Boston University, Providence, like you have to play all these ranked teams, and Northeastern is just kind of going through it this year this game especially the first period um was northeastern basically stuck in their own end um boston university had 15 shots on goal um in the first period 15 shots on goal um and they basically dominated play uh for the most part but that doesn't mean you can't learn a lot of stuff and i think the thing with with, with lund is you're learning his 
attention to defensive details, right? And that's again, we we it's the scoring is always great, right? Um, we love scoring. That's kind of the big thing we track with prospects is how well are they scoring? You know, how many goals they scored? Quinn Musty had six points tonight. Um, you know, Luca Cagnoni had four points the other night. Awesome, awesome stuff to see. But right when you're not scoring, and every player ever um, goes through droughts when they're not scoring or they're not getting, you know. What else can you do from it? And even look at William Eklund, right? Eklund hasn't scored a goal since the middle of December. He's played in every game because of what else can you do for me? And I think Cam Lund is you're seeing those details kind of being worked on right now. Um, yes, he did have an assist in this game, and it was a, a great primary assist where he um, sets up the the goal in the second period. Um, that was a, a, a crazy a crazy shift. I'll break down here in a minute, um, but I think. Again, the his ability to defend um, with him, I think the next big step is going to be earning that penalty kill time. He isn't playing penalty kill yet, um, and that's fine. I think next year he's going to be a mainstay on their penalty kill unit um, as, as he kind of goes into that junior year for him. Um, but a lot of good good stuff in the defensive zone. Um, you know, entire shift, good stick lit. He, my stick lift getting the puck out of the zone. A lot of time it was him kind of being the one to get the puck out of the zone. And we, he's, he's leaned on so much as a transition guy. Uh, Cause they don't really have guys on the blue line right now who, who can kind of do that. Especially watching Boston university. You have like Macklin Salbrini. Um, you have Lane Hudson. Lane Hudson also is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous to watch. Uh, just he's going to lead the league in the, Oh my God, don't do that. Oh my God. How did he do that plays? That's going to be, uh, Lane Hudson when he gets in the into the NHL, he's an absolute joy to watch. But um, I think the way with, with Cam Lund though is again that defensive details. You saw where a defenseman falls down, and then it's he's kind of having to cover on a rush opportunity by Boston University, and he does a great job with it, kind of being in the right position, right, um, you know, kind of right position, right. He looks like a defenseman when he needed to, so um, that's good. Good to see there. Um, the goal, the way he scored the goal, which this this whole shift, um, he's kind of a well, little bit lack of days of Cleveland, but kind of coming back to get the puck. Um, it gets it's a bad turnover, like see, it, right in front of the net or kind of like right in the high slot area. Just a bad turnover. Um, puck kind of continues to get circling around. He blocks a shot. Uh, basically, it kind of gets blocked, and he's able to grab it, puts it down, which leads to the actual transition. Um, he misses on a stretch pass from there, which would have been set up. Um, then gets the deflection on the shot that goes across ice, which lead, uh, so he basically misses on a, a stretch pass. The puck is coming back. Uh, he does a good job defensively to uh, kind of – shake things up and block things up where his puck, he, his stick kind of blocks it. It goes kind of squirts out across the ice and then the forward goes down and scores the goal. So he gets a primary assist on that would kind of got rewarded for defensive effort. But at the same time, the forward did like the other guy uh, did like 20% of the work or, or sorry, like 80% of the work and um, there, but Mostly for, for this game was a lot of having to play in his own zone. Um, you know, he was on the ice at the end of the game where um, almost helped win the game. He had two really good shots on goal um, on the one timers, just, just kind of missed on these, but was on the ice for the overtime with the goal against. It wasn't his fault. He was playing good defense. Um, I think it was the other forward if I was just kind of lost his man um, type of situation. Had a with a minute left, had a steal, um, and then led to a high danger pass that almost scored. So you're seeing the little stuff there. Is just Northeastern is is they're they're a bit of a tough watch right now, um, and especially when you're going against like the number two team in the league. Credit to them that they fought back in this game, and especially after the first 20 minutes, it was very much it looked like it was well on its way to being like a Boston or a Boston University like six to one type of, of game. Uh, they fought back in this game, kind of had to uh, play a lot of defense and they took advantage of their opportunities. But um, yeah, it's overall though. I think Lund needs to continue to work on his consistency. A couple of those, the kind of roller coaster shifts where it starts out, you know, either starts really bad and he kind of makes up for it or it starts out really good. And then he kind of does something that, that leads to, um, you know, 
to a, to a point, but yeah, he's, he's kind of struggling. Uh, the team's kind of struggling to, to, for that consistency. So, um, but again, I still think Glenn's going to work in his way to be a, a good player. I think once they start getting some more talent around him, um, where he can kind of, you know, again, even if you're driving a line, like you still need to have more talent around him. And uh, again, when you're playing a team like Boston university, you're, you're, that just the talent disparity is just there, right? That that's just a, a, a fact of life, and we've seen that with the, watching the Sharks this year. But I uh, really liked his game in that this game. You, you saw some flashes of the offensive talent, but again, it's that attention to def, detail defensively, and that's kind of with the NCAA, right? You you have to be good in that area because of just some of the guys you're playing, right? Some of these guys you're playing are, uh, you know. 23 24 years old you have to be good in those areas or else you're going to get eaten alive so um good to see from can Lund. so uh we'll dig in we'll continue to dig into these prospect players as more i'm going to have to watch this quentin musty six point affair at some point uh and report back on it because yeah uh musty's gonna be a monster so we're gonna uh i'm sure we'll have uh that sometime next week um, but we got to get caught up on some of the actual sharks news and notes, and we'll do that here in just one second. I know we come to talk, uh, sports and escape from the crazy realities of life, but can we talk for a minute about being prepared for real life? Uh, according to the FDA, pharmacies are running out of antibiotics right in the middle of the worst flu season in over a decade. I know the holiday season's over, but you might still be traveling somewhere, uh, go see some family, maybe you got to go uh, visit someplace for work. The last thing you want to do is be unprepared to take care of yourself or a loved one if you fall ill. Jay's Case can give you a peace of mind before you even hop on a flight. Uh, the Jay's Case is packed with five different antibiotics to treat a long list of bacterial illnesses, including UTIs, respiratory infections, sinuses, uh, skin infections, among others. This stuff could happen to any of us. So visit jaysmedical.com, complete your physician encounter, will be reviewed by a board-certified physician, and your medications will be dispensed by a licensed pharmacy at a fraction of the regular cost. It's never been more important to be prepared than today. Go to jacemedical.com and use offer code LOCKEDON to get $20 off your order. All right. Um, a lot of stuff to get caught up on as, uh, you know, we went yesterday, our good friend Tony on. I uh, wasn't able to kind of discuss some of the latest shark stuff. So we'll get uh, cram as much in here as we can. Uh, we got to start with the big news. Of course, uh, Joe Thornton getting his Jersey number retired. Uh, it was just going to be a matter of time. And, um, you know, I, I think want to give a little space between Marlowe's who had his uh, Jersey retired at the end of last season. And then you kind of had this year, you had the beginning of the season with Marlowe officially joining the, the team um, and then getting into the San Jose Hall of Hockey or the San Jose or sorry, the Bay Area Hall of Fame. Um, give a little space to breathe, right? Um, especially with the Sharks probably going to be bad again next year. Like just give it a little bit of space to breathe. But Joe Thornton is 1000% uh, deserving. And after Thornton gets retired, I think uh, it'll probably be a little while until we see another Shark player get their jersey retired. And that's a good debate for another day and we'll when we get closer to the joe thornton jersey retirement i'm sure if i'm still doing the podcast because locked on um hasn't found anyone better yet we will uh make sure we we, we will do the joe joe, joe thornton jersey retirement justice as, as it needs to be with a full uh rundown of, of thornton his accomplishments and what he means to san jose with probably uh, a special guest or something like that so other jersey related news it looks like we are getting the much rumored uh black jersey um the sharks haven't officially announced it but they were on practice today with wearing the uh base you know the the, the cuda style black pants with the stripe down the side the new gloves um black helmets so we're getting a black jersey at some point um my favorite part of it if it's the one that we've seen online uh, bringing back the Stadium Series logo, I love, love, love the Stadium Series logo. Um, it's one of my. I, I have the logo. If you've watched Locked On Sharks, you've probably seen the Logan Couture uh, jersey at some point. Love, love the Stadium Series logo. Excited to see this black jersey. Um, it's going to look sweet with Celebrini on the back. So uh, waiting for that bad boy. That is that is going to be a thing. Um, so and especially with. San Jose or with the NHL moving to fanatics 
Um, I think it's starting the next year. Would it be surprised? You know, it's it's going to be coming. So, um, yeah, excited to, to see that uh, eventually at some point. So, um, speaking of Logan Couture and kind of getting caught up on all the injuries here, um, sounds like sounds like so Couture um, and Nico Stern were both practicing today. Couture has been practicing. He apparently was just you know he was pushing hard to try to make it uh, his season debut on the road trip. I wouldn't be surprised if he is uh, playing his first game on Saturday against the Ducks, uh, especially with the injury situation that, that San Jose is in right now. Uh, Mikhail Granlin is considered week to week uh, with an upper body injury, but it doesn't sound as bad as initially thought. Um, watching the, you know, when you first saw the play, it looked like it could be one of those potential like. Season enders, it was very similar to kind of what happened with Eklund uh, when he had to have shoulder surgery or Kevin LeBanc when he had to have shoulder surgery and miss a good, you know, basically miss uh, the rest of their seasons. Sounds like week to week. uh, I think he'll be reevaluated mid next week to kind of see where Mikel Granlin's at. Uh, Just as a reminder, right, the, the Sharks play until I think the 31st and then they have two weeks off for, um, they get their week off, kind of their bye week, and then they get uh, time off for the All Star game. Um, so, being realistic, like if he's still kind of mad before that time, I wouldn't be surprised if they just kind of hang in there uh, and after the All Star break, give him a full extra two weeks to recover. Um, that way, he can kind of, you know, that would basically put him at almost a, a, a month uh, between games, which but you're only losing two weeks worth of games at that point. So give him a full month to kind of recover, and then you can come back strong after that. And uh, as the Sharks gear up for the, the trade deadline. So um, Nico Sturm also returned to practice was, sounds like he's getting closer. I may be a possibility for Saturday, but um, we'll see with that. I think that probably next week at some point uh, probably sounds more realistic as he's, uh, hasn't this was kind of his first real practice uh, with the Sharks was doing faceoffs, which we know how much Nico Sturm loves his faceoffs. So, um, and then Ty Emerson still going to be kind of week to week right now with an upper body injury. So, uh, yeah, plenty of uh, we're you know starting to get a little bit healthier here for San Jose. I think when Logan Couture comes back, um, it's going to be big, big for them. And hopefully, uh, you know, Mikel Granlin sounds like he he. He missed, he kind of dodged a bit of a bullet there with no surgery. And it sounds like it's just going to be kind of a rest recovery and uh situation for, for Mikhail Granlin. So um, that's going to be it for me today. My cat has the zoomies. Um, so we'll be back on Monday. We'll talk about uh, the Barracudas weekend. We'll talk about the Sharks Ducks game. Um, if all those fall apart, um, Quint Musty. I'm sure we'll talk about the Quint Musty six point game sometime next week. Uh, we'll be kicking off our draft coverage. Uh, or we've kicked off our draft coverage. We'll have a first draft profile next week. So, and um, those will probably come in about one a week. And then, you know, as the season gets closer to the end, they'll start ramping up to two a week, et cetera, et cetera. Um, try to get as many as we can jam in between now and the draft. So make sure you guys are following along wherever you get podcasts. And of course, you can watch on YouTube as well. Um, you can follow the show on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Lockdown Sharks. You can follow me on Twitter at my fry hole. Until next week, bye, friends.